Socializing your puppy with other people and other dogs is really important because it really sets your puppy up for success throughout adulthood as well. The most important time to socialize your puppy is before 16 weeks of age. Now this can sometimes be difficult because 16 weeks of age is really the time when puppy gets all the vaccinations. But if you socialize in an environment that's safe for the puppy, then you'll be able to allow them to meet many different kinds of people in many different situations in many different environments. Make sure that when you greet, you have a nice loose leash. What we're allowing these dogs to do is smell each other. So first, as you saw when they greeted each other, they smelled each other around the muzzle. Then they smelled each other around the anogenital area. And these are the areas where a lot of smells are concentrated. And these puppies can tell a lot about each other with the way that they smell they can tell the uh, sex, the age, and the emotional state just from the pheromones that are located in the moist areas of the body, such as around the mouth. And that's why dogs sniff each other's bottoms, because a lot of those pheromones are concentrated around the anogenital area. Now the puppies are licking, and licking again is a social behavior. They're also practicing a few little dominance moves by putting the head over the shoulders of the other dog. This is not bad. They're just trying to establish where each other lies within this relationship. Sanford, who's the golden doodle puppy, lay down, showing he's no threat. And then Mojo elicited play by doing, as you can see, the play bow. Now this is the time when it probably would be appropriate to let the dogs play with each other. But what you don't want to have is one puppy to overpower the other so that one of the puppies gets a negative association with play. So we have to keep a close eye on it as well as keeping as loose a leash as possible so we are as much out of the picture as possible. This is great now, as you can see, Mojo is sniffing the ground. Sniffing is a displacement behavior, which basically shows the other dog that, hey, this is cool, we're playing, we're hanging out, I'm no threat to you, you're no threat to me. It's sort of establishing this relationship. Now, as you can see, Mojo went down into his play brow again. He wants to have interaction, he wants Sanford to come play with him. They're both exhibiting great behavior. These two puppies have never met before. This is the first time they've met. We just have to be a little careful because Sanford is a little bit larger. He might overpower Mojo. And I can see that Mojo, when Mojo's tail goes down, he doesn't want to play, but then he comes right back in to elicit play again. He moves away again, not too sure, does some sniffing. So you can see Joyce is keeping the leash really loose, as am I. We need to have control, but we also want to be as much out of the equation as possible to allow these dogs the ability to act as naturally as they can while being leashed. Now what we're going to do now, the next stage of this, is the puppies seem to be um, pretty relaxed and comfortable with each other, is that we are going to drop the leashes. We're not going to take the leashes off them at this moment, because we want to make sure that play is appropriate. So we're just gonna drop the releases like this, allow the pups to do what they want. Digging is a great behavior too. Sometimes dogs will do things like itching or scratching or digging. These are all great sort of displacement behaviors. They take focus off the actual dog itself and allows the other dog to focus on something different. Now what I'm gonna do now is Joyce and I are gonna remove the leashes completely and we're gonna see if the dogs interact and play with each other. And it's fine if the dog comes back to gain confidence from the owner. Now you can see that Mojo is saying, come play with me, come play with me. 
Both of the dogs' mouths are open and very relaxed. Now what you hope is that if one puppy overpowers the other, then the other one will tell them off. What Mojo did right then was to turn his head away from Sanford when he thought Sanford was being a bit too much. And that was great because Sanford understood that language and backed away. That's the kind of language that you want. It's so important that puppies of this age get to understand canine language. Now, Sanford was a bit too much. Enough. Good, good. Sanford was a bit too much. And then Mojo told Sanford off just by having a little nip, a little snap at him. He's still interested in him though, and that's the way that dogs say, look, you are being too much. There's a bit of lip licking going on. A lip licking is a stress signal. Now Mojo's had enough. Good. Now we're going to take the dogs away from each other. Good. Now we're gonna allow the dogs just to have a bit of breather. I think this is very important, okay? That you monitor this puppy play, because the last thing you want to have happen is one of the puppies to have a bad experience with the other puppy. If a puppy's had a negative experience playing with another puppy, that might generalize to other puppies that they meet. So if you think that play is getting too rough, or you think that one of the puppies, like Mojo was doing just there, got a little bit upset, and was starting to tell that to the other puppy as Mojo was telling Sanford and then Sanford wasn't backing off. That's the time when you just come in and you separate them. You always want the pups to have a good experience during play. When the puppies are playing, it's a really good idea to call them away and refocus their attention onto you during that play. That helps puppies realize that Whenever you call them, even if they're playing with another puppy, they have to come back to you. That's how you socialize your puppy positively. I'm Victoria Stillwell for eHow Pet.